please welcome your chair for track two at DAM for the new age of great digital experience and the presenter of this session, Driving Digital Experiences with the Headless DAM, the Senior Manager of Insights and Analytics at Salt Flats, Derek Torrey. Thank you, Tom. So uh, I don't have to say welcome back to Digital Experiences, Driving Digital Experiences with the Headless DAM. That's what Tom just said. So uh, my name is Derek Torrey and uh, I am a Senior Manager with Salt Flats. And uh, let's do a quick introduction and we'll jump into this uh, discussion. So uh, Salt Flats, uh, we help discover, create, and launch new ways of thinking, working and growing to create lasting value. And so, you know, off on the right, we've got a few of our customers. And uh, I want to talk just about a couple, uh, you know, for clients like Amy's Kitchen and uh, Pandora Music. Uh, we help uh, identify needs and uh, identify solutions to meet those needs in spaces like digital asset management, uh, marketing technology, product information, and others. Other clients here, like Marquee Brands and Pacific Life, uh, we help implement those systems, uh, migrating content, uh, integrating uh, data sources and distribution sources, and really making these uh, systems tick. And then for clients like uh, Riety and uh, USAA, uh, you may, uh, names you may remember. Uh, we provide uh, kind of ideation, innovation, and uh, help those clients bring new products to market. So I've been doing uh, content management in MarTech for about 20 years. I'm really excited to be here. I want to thank Binder, our sponsor, and I want to let you know to please put your uh, questions in the QA tab, which I'm looking at on that screen over there. And uh, so let's jump in. Headless what, right? An explanation without the hype. Uh, despite the fact that, uh, you know, I think Halloween was just wrong, just behind us. Uh, headless is a crazy popular search term. Headless dam, headless commerce, uh, headless CMS. And so I wanted to just give you a, a little bit of a description without the hype. And essentially you're talking about a dam system as a service, right? Without a UI or a front end. So you're, you're able to decouple your master asset library from a one centralized user interface uh, to enable asset consumption and perhaps ingestion and other activities from other systems. So think about your users and your users of the dam. Now, I think what this does is it takes the user, your traditional users of the dam and really expands that concept. If you think about uh, Becky Caldwell's presentation earlier, talked how much she focused on people. I think as you start to talk about headless dams and integrations, your users become a really broad pool. And here, instead of them getting their content directly through a UX, you may be bringing that content and those assets to them where they're working, in a workflow system, a commerce system, someplace else. And you're doing that through APIs, uh, SDKs, software development kits, and uh, webhooks. All right. So this particular case, uh, we're talking about a, a client of ours at Salt Flats. Um, why did they uh, go for a headless dam? What was the uh, what were the business drivers? A snapshot in time. So they've got a very powerful, robust dam. They took a good amount of time researching vendors and they put a dam in place with master assets. Right. So I'll get into master assets in a moment. And then they've got several e-commerce storefronts out there. B two B. Uh, and B2C uh, that have a voracious appetite for content. So master assets, we back up a moment, um, kind of a digital original, right? So these assets have been through a creative brief, they've been through a marketing process, and they are brand, on brand and approved high quality. Uh, and marketing is benefiting from that elsewhere in the organization for traditional channels and other things. But what the digital channels start to come in with is they need not only the right asset, they need the right rendition of that asset. If it's for mobile, if it's for your screen, if it's for a social channel, uh, and they need it in the right context. So um, Gaia3 previously was talking about that customer journey. So for digital channels, not only do you need the right rendition of an asset, but you need it in the right context to where that user is at on their journey. And, and this um, creates a significant time for the designers and engineers, even though they've got these master assets in the dam, 
They got these commerce sites out here. They're doing a ton of work in the middle to make sure that the right type of content gets to the right place on that user journey in the digital channels. So what do they do? They take a look and they look out in the marketplace and they see that they've got large monolithic players. Um, I don't wanna name names, but systems that do everything could meet this use case. Um, but they're sometimes too big to, to be very flexible and sometimes they're too expensive. So what did they do? Well, here's the uh, client, it's Herman Miller. Uh, uh, global manufacturer and retailer, both B2B and B2C. And if we move from left to right, uh, you'll see that they started with uh, a binder, master asset dam. And I won't go too far into that other than to say, we've got on-brand approved, high quality assets ready uh, for marketing. And as you move to your right, you see the compact view API, which is an API that binder has put out. Um, it's fairly robust. Um, and then you've got in the center, uh, next.js, which is a JavaScript framework. So what this, what Herman Miller did was they built a JavaScript application in the center that reaches upstream to binder through that API, gets content, and then uses MJIX and Wistia for real-time transcoding and CDN, and then delivers content out to design within reach, hermanmiller.com and hey.com. So they've effectively integrated those commerce channels to the dam, but they did it themselves with some smart coding uh, JavaScript framework. Now, what do you see happening here? So on the left over in the dam world, you've got WIP. You've got the land of kind of content uh, iterations and creation, right? This is where content is started, it iterates and it's finalized. Now on the right, you've got kind of the land of the customer experience. And this is all about renditions of content and context, context along that user journey. And so DAM over on the left, CX over on the right, and you've got this blend. And what this customer did, what Herman Miller did was build a solution in the center here. And what's happening in the market, what we see is that DAM systems are trying to push upstream, closer to the screen, closer to the experience. And CMS systems are kind of pushing back upstream, right? They're trying to get more closer to the asset creation. And if you follow the market, you'll see acquisitions, you know, so-and-so bought this DAM and then this CMS bought that. And, and it's, it's, it's really moving uh, in this direction with CMS going up and, and Dan going to the right. So uh, implementation challenges, what were the technical and operational hurdles for doing what we just looked at here at Herman Miller? So the sub headline here is know your products and remember to assess the full scope of a solution, not only the development and implementation. So uh, both vendors, uh, Salesforce on the commerce side and Binder up on the DAM side had APIs, but you couldn't just connect those APIs together and make this work at scale and at high velocity. So they had, the vendors have APIs, it's a good start, but they weren't good enough for what this client needed, for Herman Miller needed to do. In addition, they had a reliance on third parties to help implement and manage those two systems, Salesforce uh, and Binder. And so a lack of deep in-house expertise at Herman Miller uh, probably increased the scope of the work that they had to do with the solution rather than taking full advantage of Salesforce and Binder because they professed to not be exactly experts at Salesforce and Binder at the time. So the solution that they built in the center, that Prism solution, the JavaScript solution became bigger. And then lastly, you know, another hurdle here is even though you've got APIs put in place. So if you think about Binder here, an API, and then the, the Herman Miller solution here, that API abstracts things apart from these two systems so that you can talk a more common language. But even with that API, you end up with dependencies on 
that application. So in this case, dependencies on Binder and dependencies on Salesforce. That means if Salesforce makes a change, Binder makes a change, make an upgrade, you could break everything that you've built. So that's a, that's a challenge. It's something you've got to document well and keep front and center. So benefits and reflection. Did it work? And uh, what insights can you take away? So yes, uh, it worked. Um, the solution is delivering the right content uh, to consumers quickly at scale. Um, and what would you take away from this? So educate your vendors on the importance of robust and well-documented APIs and use real world use cases. I, I cannot speak more highly of this. Uh, your vendors need to know how you want to implement and integrate your, their systems and real world use cases, you know, taken with time with the details uh, can really help move that conversation forward. Remember that custom software must be managed and supported like any other product. And that decommissioning technology takes twice the time to bring online. Those are really two different things. So the, the manage like a product means it's gonna have a development cycle. It's gonna have a release cycle. It's gonna have a QA cycle. It needs to have a support process. It needs to have a help desk and ticket process. So just because you're integrating two pieces of software, don't let that think you, you, you can just turn it on and, and it'll run itself. It, it won't. It needs everything that a, that a, that a first-class uh, software product has. And that second piece, this is something that I've learned a lot over time in my 20 plus years, is that turning technology on and building it and implementing it into your process usually takes about half the time as unwinding it and turning it off because people just get their hands on it and it ends up doing more than you ever expected, some good, some bad, and it takes a lot of time to turn it off. So you really wanna pay attention to that upfront. Uh, the DAM and CMS landscape is changing rapidly. I remember I said uh, DAMs are trying to push closer to the CX and DXPs, closer to the customer. Uh, and CMS systems are trying to push back upstream towards where traditional DAMs uh, had strength. And so um, vendor selection today is very important because your vendor will be somewhere on that spectrum. You know, they're a traditional dam vendor trying to move upstream, or are they a CMS vendor that bought a dam and they're trying to integrate the two? I think vendor selection is very important. However, um, integrating applications and content and data, like Herman Miller did in this case, is even more critical than your vendor selection. Uh, being able to do integrations quickly uh, at scale and at uh, velocity, I think is, is the most critical uh, challenge that marketing technology organizations face today. And then lastly, uh, going back to uh, Becky Caldwell's uh, presentation earlier, take your journey and not uh, the market or the vendor's journey. So it's gonna be very different depending on where you're at. If you've got a, an old dam, perhaps, maybe a traditional old dam, and you're looking at a new sp this space today, you know, maybe you look closer towards the CMS space, right? And see if they've got dam capabilities. But if you've got a robust dam and maybe not as much uh, capabilities at the CMS level, maybe you take an approach like Herman Miller did and start to do some uh, work to integrate those two. So important to know where you're at on that journey and take your journey, not what a, the market tells you to do, not what some one at a presentation tells you to do, uh, not what a vendor tells you to do, but take a look at where you are and uh, really use that journey. So let me see if we've got any uh, questions. I don't, I don't see any questions, but I think that's because I'm not looking at the right there we go. Now oh, I'm looking at the right thing, but I still don't see any questions. So I'm on, I'm out of time with my material. I am both the moderator and the presenter, so I can't ask myself any questions. So it would be awesome if anybody had a question out there. Otherwise, I think I will wrap this up early. All right, well, Tom, I think uh, I think that is it.
for my uh, presentation. I think I went a little quick and it doesn't look like I got any questions. Uh, but you, you will Let be me... in the Meet the Speakers Lounge after this, is that, is that correct? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. I'm going to head over to the spe Speakers Lounge. And uh, I just I did want to say to the uh, audience, um, thanks for attending uh, DAM for the New Age of Great Digital Experience. Uh, the recordings will be available afterwards, um, accessible in the agenda tab. Uh, don't forget, it's not too late to go meet Binder. Uh, there's a tab on the uh, main UI for that. And then uh, lastly, uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, thanks to Binder, the sponsor of the event. And I uh, look forward to seeing everybody again soon. And like I said, I'll be available in the uh, in the lounge for questions if there are any. And uh, let's see, make sure there's not any here. All right, doesn't look like there's any questions. So hopefully that material was clear. Thank you, everybody.